What's up, Steelers fans? Welcome back to another episode of Around the Berg. I'm your host, Mitchell Wolf, here with my co-host, Shane Kubis. This week, we're going to have a, a bit of a cheerier episode, hopefully. Yeah. Um, and we're going to kind of dive deep into the Steelers' salary cap situation, uh, you know, kind of see how it's affecting them this year, what they can do until the season begins, and then how it affects their plans for the next season and beyond. Uh, in the meantime, Shane, I know you're a little bit under weather, but otherwise, how you doing? I'm feeling a little bit better now, yeah. So, uh, nice. yeah, just kind of just antsy about the draft coming up. I think we're kind of all just waiting for that to happen, so we have some concrete things to talk about as far as changes to the team. Since looks like we might not see much change between now and then. So, yeah, this is the time where you know people are just getting antsy. So, you know, people are itchy on their trigger finger with their takes and their mm-hmm. yep. mock drafts, and you always get- fun. You get anonymous uh, ex NFL, uh, ex New York Jets scouts putting their oh, yeah. mock drafts on the TL. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's a fun one. Yeah, I don't want to give him any any airtime. No, but... That's why I think I'm just, yeah. I think it's just that's just how I'm going to refer to him now on as yes. the ex NFL, uh, the ex New York Jets scout. That's how he wants to be referred to as. So, yeah, you know, that's the ex who was interviewing who was interviewing for GM jobs and right. major yeah, interview was there. Yeah, um, yeah. So that was the whole thing, <laughs> but. We'll move on from that because I don't mm. really want to talk about him anymore. So if you know, you know. So yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I wanted to get into this last week, but obviously, you know, more important stuff came up. Yes. So now we're going to get into it. So as the Steelers stand right now, they have about fourteen million dollars in cap space, and that's depending on where you look. You can look at spot rack or over the cap. It's right around fourteen million in terms of you on average the two numbers out. Um, and that's the top 51, which is generally, that's the generally expected number for the yeah. top 51 most valuable contracts. Cause obviously some of these contracts are going to cut with preseason, all that, um, see money moved around, but so we'll operate with that $14 million right. being the number right now. And as of right now, they only have 26, mi- they have $26 million in dead cap right. for the, for this season. Um, and next season they have no dead cap and they're projected to have, between 58 and 76 million cast base. Now, I don't know why the number jumps up so much in terms of the, or the, the difference between the two sites. Their numbers are so different. Um, but the point is they have a lot of money next year. Right. Yeah. Either way, like no matter how you look at it, they're going to have a lot of flexibility for sure. Yeah. I really don't know why there's, I mean, they might, I, I even looked like, I think they're both assuming the same like cap they one might be have the projected cap numbers a lot higher because they're maybe kind of projecting the growth of the cap on a year-to-year basis or the other might have a more conservative estimate um so that might be why but the point is Steelers have are gonna have a lot of money off the books next year so right that's kind of why i wanted to get into this to see like how are their moves this year gonna affect or how are those moves affected this year or how are they affected by next year's cap space right uh but the big move that still is kind of out there is them bringing in a strong safety because mm-hmm. they haven't signed trail Edmonds. Um, the market's kind of drying up. We've seen uh, Ronnie Stanley get a deal. There's another safety that just, excuse me, another safety that just signed recently. I thought, um, I, I know Dream Jackson, that's right. Uh, yeah. Resigned he came the back Broncos, to the, yep. And he was apparently Steelers brought him in for a visit. Uh, yeah. So, you know, they're kind of kicking the tires on a lot of people, but Matthew and Edmonds are still out there. So they're two biggest targets, if you will. Yeah. And the thing that's interesting for me at this point is the fact that Edmonds still hasn't signed anywhere mm-hmm. is telling me either he's not getting any offers that he feels is worth what he's showed so far. And he's looking for hopefully someone after the draft who didn't get safety help to yeah. give him a better deal or the Steelers haven't given him any serious contract offers yet. One of the like or a combination of those two. I think it is. I think it's the former. I I think that they have given him a number and said like, Hey, like this is what we can do right now. Um, Right. And you know, once we get through the draft, you know, we'll have a better feel on what that number is. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I have to assume that they're going to approach this draft, assuming that they can't get Evans back. So they will most likely draft a successor, but even if they do spend a first, a second or third round pick on Edmonds, I would not say that that, completely excludes them from bringing him back yeah it doesn't i think especially if they take a guy who maybe could fill the type of role he filled but maybe not yet yeah somebody like that (laughs) even well even like if they wait later like i had in a mock i did recently was i had nick cross in the third round i I was doing doing one as well and i had brian cook in the right so like again somebody in that mold of Mm -hmm. like a second third round 
type of player yeah. who probably isn't ready to be a full-time starter week mm-hmm. one, or at least not a, a good starter week one. Yeah. I say good starter because they're yeah. going to play. <laughs> right. But like, they're going to have some qualities that they like from the safety position. But if you bring Edmonds back, it just allows you to develop that player a little bit more. And then if Edmonds doesn't continue to get better or whatever, then you can move on from him then again. So yeah, and, and yeah. They, they did sign Carl Joseph back, which right, is mostly which, a depth signing, but like, yeah, I don't, the guy's a former first round pick and like started for multiple seasons. So, you know, yeah, if he has talent, to, but yeah. yeah, like if worse comes to worse, like let's say they like draft a safety and that guy gets like a little nicked up in the preseason. Right. So like we can't, but like you, I think you could, it wouldn't be great, but like you could start Carl Joseph for like two weeks and maybe it won't be off. Yeah. He's, <laughs> he's capable of yeah. taking snaps. It's not like he's a guy that you can't put on the field outside of like a couple specific situations like he has the experience to go out there and play it's just not who you're hoping it's going to be yeah exactly yeah, so yeah so you know the situation isn't dire yet but no. i mean I, I i think that matthew is still gonna end up being too expensive uh even though yeah. he has come out and said you know i'm not necessarily looking to like make a ton of money on this contract like i, I want to win more than anything uh so one could say that might keep the steelers out of it <laughs> but he has yeah. mentioned playing for mike tomlin a few times as well I think what it comes with him, I think, like you said, money is not his biggest factor, but like as he mentioned, he would have taken the deal that the Chiefs offered to uh I can't remember Justin, Justin Reed, Reed. Right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which that was what, like ten and a half, eleven ish million, I think. It was thirty yeah, three years, thirty one and a half. Which yeah, that's definitely below market value for him, regardless. I know it was around that range. Mm-hmm. So do I think that another team is gonna be able to offer that to him and he'll take that? No, because I think he wanted to go back to the Chiefs, which is why he would have mm-hmm. taken it. But I wouldn't be surprised if the number's a little bit lower than maybe it probably could or should be, depending on if the team that he wants to go to really, if he really wants to be there. Like, if he really wanted to be with the Steelers, would he take a couple million less for over two or three years? Maybe. Mm -hmm. But it's still going to be something where they would have to push a lot of money in that contract into 2023 and 24, which they have the space to do, but that's a lot of money that they're then throwing down the road a little bit. And it's not something this team really likes to do a lot. So, yeah. And and that's the thing with Matthew is like his average deal. Like it's projected at over 15 million a year, uh, which, you know, if they spread that out, like they could take, have that 10, you know, this year and then, you know, 20 next year or something or right. Spread it out over three years. But that's, you know, I I think they'd be a little concerned about that, especially for, I mean, you know, Tyron Matthew has been an incredible player for a long time, but like he is, undersized he's an older player yes uh, maybe yeah. learning a new system so there's a lot of a lot of unknowns or variables that you know might not go his way so you kind of might want to go with more of a, a quote sure thing at Edmonds granted his ceiling is lower um and his floor right. might be lower as well but still but he, um, he does how do you we don't have to worry about how he projects you're right exactly like that's that's the thing about it that is it worth that extra four five six million dollars a year possibly mm-hmm. for a, who could be a possible upgrade but maybe only for a year at most or two yeah, and that's that's why I, I like it. I re, I've always been a big fan of bringing Edmonds back Me because yeah. you get him for at least like two thirds, maybe half of the price of Matthew. Probably. Um, yeah. And I think that I think that what will happen is that he will not be signed until after the draft. And at that point, his leverage is for, for, with relative with relation to the Steelers. It's probably the lowest it could be, assuming yeah. they do draft a safety. Mm-hmm. If they don't, then he has great leverage, and yeah. they still have room to sign him for a bigger deal. Exactly. I think they yeah. just kind of want to have more. They want to have more questions answered on their end before they commit X amount of money to him, which right. I think is fair for both it's sides. Fair. It's fair. It is. So yeah. Um. And yeah, I'm still a big fan of bringing him back. Uh. So some of the other contracts in the future, which there's been a lot of talk about Deontay Johnson. As yes. Of late yeah. because There was just a report today that a lot of the top receivers in, uh, the same draft class as him. Right? Am I am I counting that right? Yeah. Okay. I believe so. So yeah. uh, the AJ Browns, DK Metcalf, Terry McLaurin, all those guys. I think yeah. McLaurin's not doing it, but they are all exploring sitting out the OTA period until they get new deals because now the wide right. receiver market is booming. <laughs> yeah, and that's kind of the problem with I think this whole conversation, right? Is a lot all these guys are more than worth a second contract to me, but at the amount of money that these guys are getting paid right now a lot of these teams like especially like if you're washington are they in a position right now to want to commit that much money to one player especially at a re- at receiver right now as good as he's been for them i don't yeah. know if they're really in a position to spend that much money on just a receiver like they're not in com- they're not really competing competing right now at least it doesn't feel like that i mean the defense could show up again like it did two years ago and they could be a wild cardish team but it's tough right now with that division 
Yeah, and, and McLaurin is it's he for him at least relative to the other ones he's interesting because. Since he's, a, since he's a rookie, like he's been such an important leader in that locker room. Yes, yeah. like he's been a captain since he was a rookie, which is uh, pretty unique. <laughs> with that, with that culture, though, and, I mean, it's not surprising. Yeah, say, that, well, yeah. I mean, that's that's almost more impressive. Is like, you, yeah, because he you took yeah. charge of this team that has been mm-hmm. in the you know bathroom <laughs> for yeah. a long time, and like you've so, been the guy, yeah, uh, despite having a ton of quarterback turnover and just being a, a dumpster fire of a franchise. But yeah, I mean, you know. There's obviously the Christian Kirk deal that's crazy uh, with an average value of 18 million per year uh, mm-hmm. with yes. signing bonuses in the 20 millions. So, you know, for th- those guys are, you know, those guys are all clear to find, you know, wide receiver ones in the NFL. Yeah. The case with Deontay Johnson's a little different because in terms of like target share and all that, he's definitely been a wide receiver one for the Steelers last yes. few seasons. The problem is he does have those production lapses where he has those drop issues, which I think, again, for the most part, I think has been cleaned up there just a few yeah. games a year where he it seems like just yeah, loses his mind. And like, you know, if you talk to anybody who was around the team, who was close to the team in terms of as, from media or team perspective, they said like this guy was working his mm-hmm. butt off to get that issue fixed. Like he was always first on the field practicing stuff, you know. He, it's not like it's not like a hand like an actual hand issue no it's not like a not wanting to fix an issue it's just like sometimes his brain just breaks it's just like it, a pitcher yeah. it's like a pitcher you can't throw it at first sometimes like john it's Lester. that yips type of thing and, yeah. and i think with him like the the thing that's so interesting about it is because it is a mental thing it only really shows up occasionally which is why mm-hmm. it's so like it's it's hard to project like is that something that is ever going to go away or is it yeah. something you kind of have to expect might happen from time to time and obviously that doesn't make him all of a sudden like a guy that's not worth getting paid but it does make you pause a little bit more than maybe you would just looking at his production and what he's done for the offense for the past two Mm -hmm. years so and and the other thing is that if you think about it he's never really had a normal year of quarterbacking no not his normal. first year on the team it was the 19 year where he had mason and hodges yeah, and just, everybody yeah. in 2020 ben was there and he was fine but he wasn't certainly one of his best in the last he year wasn't obviously, ben, he was no. a shell of himself right so you know he's and he's still put up like uh, i think he was a thousand yard receiver two years ago if not he was really close right yeah i believe he i think he's coming off the two straight thousand yeah exactly yeah yeah so and again having those bad games so He's still been extremely productive. Mm-hmm. So, and I like I get like he is not he's not like a size or speed freak like DK Metcalf or anything like that. He's just a very good route runner, good after the catch, and when his brain is there, he's got good hands. <laughs> yeah. So, I th- I think there's reason to be like concerned about not giving him that huge deal. And the problem is like if the Steelers don't really give him the deal he wants, somebody else probably will. And that's the, that's kind of the key thing too is we know looking at what Kirk got this year, mm-hmm. right? And that's kind of the contract everybody's looking at is like, ah, oh, this kind of broke the receiver market. And in a, to a degree, I think it did, but it is also a contract that's structured in a way where it's really a two year, like 37, I think million dollar deal in all reality. Like that's what it can be, but that's still 18 and a half million dollars a year for two years. So it's still, I mean, he's setting the, the receiver market as like, if you are a good number two, number th- even a high number three type of receiver, you can get this type of money on the open market if you make it there. Yeah, and right. that does not sound, set a good precedent for teams looking to upgrade a receiver, not through the draft. Like that's, it's kind of becoming an issue where, and and this also doesn't help that receivers have been pretty plentiful in the drafts for the past couple of years. It is making it seem like some teams are going to start doing what, th- what the Packers did with Adams and what the chiefs did with Hill, where they're not going to pay that monster receiver contracts. They don't think it's worth well, it. So I'll push back a little because the Packers okay. were willing to pay it. That's true too. Yeah, that I mean, that was also a situation where it felt yeah. like Adams just kind of was like, "I don't want to." Play yeah, and, and, but but, but your I yeah. think your general point right. still yeah. stands. Like there are, there's always going to be a team that's going to be willing to pay that number. Um, and I think your point about like the receiver draft class every year is always super deep now. Yeah, and, like you can like, just yeah. find talent everywhere. Like that's why, like I, I'm kind of starting to move towards like a quote receivers don't matter in the draft. Like, yeah. I honestly think like unless they have one like truly unique mostly physical trait so like a speed a, and then like a size with with the requisite athleticism i'm probably not gonna draft i don't really want to draft in the first round because i can get that value later and get a, a, a draft position in the first round like an edge rusher an offensive tackle that there's gonna be a bigger drop off if you wait you know a few rounds so 
you know, and the Steelers have kind of proved that over the years too. Yeah, exactly. I mean, they, they've taken that model before anyone probably else really felt the need to do so. They've just been very good at identifying guys that do exactly what they want them to do within the confines of the offense. And I mean, Johnson was a third round pick. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, and look how much he's produced. Like, it, it matters more about one the fit, obviously, and also just your skill set. Like, can you be that route runner guy with Johnson's case? Can you be the big body, you know, speed height threshold guy with like Chase Claypool? Mm -hmm. It's that type of stuff. And you can find those guys later because they do have some things that they're not elite at or the greatest at, but it doesn't matter if you build a cohesive receiver unit around. Yeah. Yeah. Like I have like in my mind, like I'm never like, I I, I very rarely draft receiver in the first round. If he is a, like not a complete, because like a lot of Mm -hmm. the receivers in the first round of this year's draft, like they kind of all have, discernible flaws like yes yeah if you think about like like uh chris olave like not great after the catch not really no. great just catch situation. not a lot of strength in general yeah just right. not very good tackle garrett right. wilson yeah. his route running is a little weird it's it's yeah that's probably the best way to describe yeah. it is it's and, just and weird, like yeah. i know he tests his his straight line testing was very good but i didn't really see that on film no he he doesn't feel like a, a true burner on right. the field at all so it's like, yeah. and like drake london like doesn't really separate doesn't necessarily need to but like again no, like but... i want that perfect prospect in the first round of the receiver right. Traylon burks obviously didn't test well in terms of the traditional receiver stuff yeah and james williams has injuries so that's another thing so yeah but my point is that like if you're not if you don't have that perfect prospect i wouldn't take in the first round because you can find guys that they have those flaws but like you can just take them later to get better value for it but anyways yeah. I, I digress um so yeah i I think that they might treat uh, Johnson kind of like they they're treating Edmonds. Honestly, like there isn't that option for it, but I think they'll, you know, let this year play out. And I think they'll probably give him a decent offer, but I just don't think that they are going to dole out that kind of money to a guy that isn't really a dominant number one receiver. Right. In, in a year where they are, I think are either going to be in the second year of their rookie quarterback deal or they're drafting a rookie quarterback next year. Right, one of the two. And I, I think, too, like, I was considering that maybe they would go the franchise tag route, but that tag is going to be monstrous now with the, some of the deals that have been signed. Like, they're, you're point. looking at, yeah. like, a sign- I, I assume by the time it'd be getting placed, it might be $20 million or something like that, close to that, per like, for the franchise receivers. Like, and at that point, like, would you rather just offer, like, a shorter deal that is closer to that number but not quite as high? So, okay, okay. Yeah, so the the – the projected franchise tag for a wide receiver would be just over $20 million. Yeah, exactly. So you're looking at paying him $20 million for a year, or or could you get him to take a shorter deal that is lower value by a little bit, but does save you a little bit of money? Like it, mm-hmm. it none of that really makes a lot of sense for them unless they committed to him. At that point, I would just commit to him. Yeah. So it's it's gonna be tough. I mean, it, yeah, and depends. like maybe he really meshes well with Trubisky or whoever yeah. the new quarterback is, and you know, he's like, you know what, I'll I still want like the 18, but like I'll stay for 18 instead of going somewhere else for 20, right, you know, or something right, like exactly. that. So, you know, I think that there's some merit to be had about, because like we said, they're going to have a ton of money next year. So giving they him will. that big contract is probably fine, but I would rather them devote a lot of that money towards paying Minka Fitzpatrick. Right. And that deal is, I mean, with the way that the safeties were paid this year, we're what, at least probably like 18 million. Yeah, year, and that's probably the, safety, the floor. The safety market is exploding as well. Right, like especially for legitimately high-end safeties. Like those mm-hmm. guys can – as much as I think the safety position is is undervalued a little bit at this point, It if you have an elite one or one that ha- does what you need them to do to kind of make the defense work like Minka did for us this year mm-hmm. and should do in the future, they're going to get their money. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, and honestly, the good news is, is like it is just starting to boom. So like next year – they could get in like at the perfect time because yeah, I think it'll work out. Yeah. Because so Jamal Adams is the highest in terms of average value and <laughs> overall value. It looks like at yeah. just under 18 million a year average, right. uh, Kevin Byard and Marcus Williams are 14 Harrison Smith, 16 Justin Simmons, 15 Buda Baker, just under 15 Eddie Jackson, just under 15 Quandary mm-hmm. 13. Then it drops off. Yeah. Pretty uh, soon. There's a few guys at 11 and 10 and then a lot of guys under 10. So, you know, we, I think we can all agree that Minka Fitzpatrick is a top five, probably a top three safety NFL. Um, the franchise, honestly, if they wanted to franchise tag him, he, I mean, that's what, that's what the Bengals are doing with Jesse Bates, and yeah. he's, he's not going to report until they get him a deal because the deal for a safety next year on a franchise tag is only $14 million. 
Yeah, that's kind of the problem. Is like it does put you in a bind because like yeah, the Bengals did it. I think just to make sure that they have more time to negotiate yeah. with him, mm-hmm. not to actually have him play on the tag. I doubt the original purpose yeah. of the franchise tag, right? <laughs> so like that's the whole problem with it is they they're I don't think they're going to take that route anyway. But even if yeah. they did, like he's not going to play on that, and he shouldn't yeah. realistically because it's not going to accurately represent his value mm-hmm. based on. And that's kind of the problem with it is starting caliber safeties are are pretty much at about ten million or less on average. If you're looking at like true like top 10 ish, top 15 ish safeties in the league, that's where you start getting into like 13, 14 plus million. And it's only those guys really. So that average is being weighed down by the amount of solid starters that aren't getting that money. Yeah. And honestly, like I, so I just found spot racks. Um, mm-hmm. They're like market value for Fitzpatrick. Yeah. It's a four year, $61 million deal. <sighs> That feels too. That's low. a bargain. <laughs> that feels way too. I, That's a. Bargain, I just. I just don't mind. see that yet. That that would be like I'd love. I mean, if he could sign that today, that'd be awesome. But I don't see that happening. I don't think that would make sense for him. Um, I, I don't know. Like it. It's going to be interesting to see how they try to structure that or what the deal ultimately looks like. But I'm expecting it to be at least 17 plus, you know. At the oh, yeah. I, I'm saying I'm thinking 18. Right. I That's think, probably where it starts. And, because... and frankly, like, again, like because they have that big expansive cap and the cap i think next year is going to go a, up a lot higher and i think, I think a, so too a big part of it is i think so correct me if i'm wrong but the nfl's deal with direct tv for sunday ticket expires very soon yeah is it this off so. season or next off season it's either I th- it's one of the two i want to say it's this off season yeah but i'm not 100 i saw something, sure. something about it today that like apple tv is considering buying yes, it yes i've heard um, that too so which... i just want to yeah, they, so after the 2022 season is when so the it's after, so it is the after so cap. that's gonna happen. That might that might wait until next year, but the cap is gonna go up a lot because that's gonna be worth a lot of money. It so is that's gonna take yeah. the cap up a good bit for everybody. I do think so. Yeah. So, you know, signing make it to a 16, 18 plus million dollar deal, um, for a, like four or five years is I'm very much okay with that. Yeah, try and honestly, like, and this is kind of where the next year's money is gonna be important. Like, shove a lot of that money in that first year, man. And yeah, just let yeah, it, yeah. Like this, like. This is like you are signing a TJ Watt level defender. Like, yeah. please pay him his money. <laughs> get him on the like I said. Get him figured out. Pay him whatever you need to pay him. Structure it however you need to structure it to make it work for you guys. But make sure it gets done because realistically, let's say you know Mitch plays relatively well if he's a starter. And, and I hope I do. Rookie. Honestly, you know, it's yeah, it's gonna be tough. Like, but yeah, right. <laughs> so you do you do that. You hope for that. If that doesn't work out, like you're you're still in a holding pattern for figuring out what the offense is actually going to be long term. Having the defense set for multiple years and yeah. giving you the ability to stay competitive because that's what this team ultimately cares about mm-hmm. while finding your footing on offense is going to be really important. And without Minka back there, I don't see that happening. So yeah. I'd like to to make sure that stays where it is right now. And in today's NFL, I'm like where pass we're really like the debate between pass rush and coverage mattering is like the debate. But when you yeah. have at least aspects of both and you have like a premier edge rusher, which is great, and especially in the prime of his career, you have a great interior defender who is kind of nearing the end of his career. Maybe he gets Stefan to it back and he kind of gets back into that'd form. be great. Yeah. We'll say. And then you need to, you need to go move on, like find a corner, but you have the yeah. two cornerstones of your defense and in a NFL that is increasingly moving towards a too high two safety defense where they are yes. both asked to really cover the whole field. Having a guy like Mike Fitzpatrick that can do that one by himself is mm-hmm. like, this is kind of the, this is the other side of the Jordan Davis coin mm-hmm. where if you can have, that so where it was Jordan Davis, where you can have that massive front defensive line defender that can eat blocks and free up the other defenders to make plays such that you can take guys out of the box and be strong against the pass because he's so strong against the run and he can free up the other defenders. The other side of the coin is that if you have a guy like Mike Fitzpatrick who can be a true center fielder free safety and you are not forced into playing those, uh, double too high defense or at least not present them pre-snap where you can right. do more rotations and stuff because he can cover so much ground that allows your defense to be more flexible yeah and like I said, it all comes down to like when you have a player that is uniquely talented at a particular skill especially if you're talking about safeties their ability to play center field legitimately because there's guys that you know they're asked to do that but there's not many guys that are truly sideline to sideline you know can cover all aspects of the field and, and help make up for mistakes, which is what kind of make it had to do all of last year, mm-hmm. but especially in the run game. Yeah. Unfortunately, that's a whole other story, but he, he could honestly probably make a case to be considered a linebacker at this point. If he wanted <laughs> to for France, it might help with the franchise tag, <laughs> but it, uh, 
it's just when you have a guy that can do something like that, like you said, whether it's like whatever sp- skill you're talking about, like you said, Jordan Davis is calling card or whatever it is. It just makes everything easier. And as a defense, making things easy is about as nice of a thing as you can say about somebody making things easier. So, but yeah, so we'll move on to kind of the, the less important deals for next right. year's cap. Um, and the two that I'm keeping an eye on are, Cam Sutton, Devin Bush, and yeah. the Steelers did not pick up Devin Bush's option. I, Which, I don't, yeah, I don't think they have, and I think they still have time to, but they probably won't. I I don't see because I just don't the <laughs> they probably assume right that he'll be better, but I doubt he'll be so much better that whatever the fifth year option is is going to be low enough that it would that they wouldn't be able to keep him for cheaper on a, on a shorter deal if he yeah. played. So they I don't think it makes sense for them to do it. I, I don't think this is the same situation with Edmonds where I may have liked to have done that with him because he showed improvement in his third year. But yeah, to me, it wouldn't make sense for them to make that decision, even if they, they do. So, yeah. And it, granted, he, he will still be so young that, you know, let's like, if he has a great comeback year and, you know, figures it out and is playing well next to miles, Jack, you know, I think they can, they can get him a, a decent deal that pays him well, but it's also not going to break the bank because he's a linebacker and, right. um, they can make it work. And I feel like another other teams aren't going to want to take that risk on him. Like they're not going to no. shell out like they would for Deontay Johnson. I don't think so. No, no. And the other one is Cam Sutton who signed a two year deal last <sighs> off season. And yeah. he had a bit of a rough season this year, but it was kind of just because he got put in some bad positions by injuries on the defense. And, and I think they just like having him because he's so versatile, um, can play special teams as well. And he's just like a, a reliable piece that can do a lot of things for you. So Again, a guy that might not command much in the open market because I don't think many other teams are going to like want to pay him as a number one corner, but no. they could kind of keep bringing him back. And, you know, again, next year they'll have a lot of room to give him money if he's like, listen, like I want to go somewhere else, but if you guys pay me enough, like I'll stay. Yeah, I, I just want to see him as much as his versatility is an asset. He's one of those guys where I feel like kind of in a to a much lesser extent, the same problem Minka had in, in Miami where he could do so many things that it kind of mm. hurt him almost. Yeah. I want to see Sutton just be able to be like the slot corner. Like, I think that's his best role. I think that's where he's most comfortable. So with them bringing back with a spoon and bringing in, I know I should have had this guy, you know, um, why can't I think of his name? Losing my mind. Uh, the guy they brought back or something no, they brought in? The, the, from the Bills. Uh, Levi, Levi Wallace. Wallace. Yep, yeah. there we go. can never remember. So, yeah, Levi Wallace. Bring those two in to play outside primarily, mm-hmm. obviously. I'm hoping will mean that Sutton will get the majority of the slot snaps, at least especially against if they're trying to guard a true decent receiver in the slot. Otherwise you might see other guys kind of play there occasionally, but that's what I'm hoping to see from him. Yeah, I agree. I th- um, and then the other, so Stefan to is also a free agent next right. season and it's just so hard to really predict. Yeah, how I, gonna I don't get know. Resolved it's... it's not clear if he's going to play, right? You know, I, if he doesn't, I can't imagine they'd pay him, you know, they no. find a way to try to find a way to get out of that deal. Um, and then they just have to kind of move on and figure out something else uh, moving forward. Uh, Loki need a Mike Minka Fitzpa- or sorry, uh, Chris Boswell is going to be free agent, so they'll need to resign him. <laughs> yeah, they better at least. <laughs> we'll yeah, I mean, way. Grant, like, you know, they've been, you know, you can find kickers, but aside from that one fluky season, Boswell has just been so reliable. Yeah, and he's, only, he's only 32, so he's got like eight years left. Oh, yeah, as a kicker, yeah, especially. Yeah. I mean, he's he he's one of those kickers like as much as that position is pretty interchangeable for a lot of teams if once you have a guy that's in his level especially mm-hmm. outside of that season it's you, you want to keep him for as long as you can yeah and this is one that they, i think i'm thinking a little ahead this on this one but mm-hmm. i'm wondering if they kind of start to kick the tires on getting an alex highsmith extension done i would highly consider it if he has to, if he has a good season yeah, this year, which ju- just I, I just to will. avoid that like and i just to avoid the bud dupree situation mm-hmm. right yeah because like as much as i am perfectly fine letting another team pay as much for dupree as they did with, with the titans mm-hmm. it's he was a nice piece to have opposite why and and having highsmith there has been really good as well so far i think for the most part so if you can hammer out a really team-friendly deal for him which i think is very possible even if he plays relatively well mm-hmm. um that would be, I think, a really good way just to make sure, like, because, like, I don't want to have to constantly wonder who the opposite of Watt is going to be. Yeah. Like, I'd rather have a guy that, even if he's not spectacular right, by any means, is going to be able to get the job done and and be an actual solid player in his own right on top of having mm-hmm. Watt there, too. So, yeah. And I think that he's going to fly, like, under the radar enough that I think so, too. If he's not, and that part of that is just because of how 
good the other players around him are. Right. That like yeah. he's not going to put up these insane stats where it's like, oh wow, like he's going to get paid soon. Like if he has like an like if he has like an eight sack or eight like eight eight ten sack year, like that's a really good year. But like it's not going to be like a red alert on the radar of like the right. NFL team about like oh we need to like, yeah. get this guy. So yeah. they they might like offer him kind of a it it might, it might be like a nice deal at the time, but he probably should reject it and <laughs> go to the market. But you right. know, maybe they can swing it yeah. and be like hey like we really want to have you here for the long term with TJ. So you know we give you this deal and you don't have to worry about playing under contract year next year or something like that. Yeah, he, he feels like the kind of guy that would, would do that for that's, sure. Yeah, that's a good, yeah, and exactly. He, the thing that's kind of going against him too, a little bit, or the thing I think would help us is as much as I think he's a really good player, he doesn't have like those stupid wow moments that Dupree pulled off yeah. occasionally where like he had the highlight run. Yeah. That's just like Dupree nowhere. being like a, a, one of the greatest Supreme athletes athlete. ever. Yeah. Right. Like he doesn't have like, that's kind of what I think made Dupree kind of pop for certain teams with this, and the Titans, especially obviously mm-hmm. in the end. Was like he had he showed these flashes of like ridiculousness that mm-hmm. most guys just don't show. Whereas yeah. High Smith is more of a true like solid all around player opposed to that. So. The, the other the other side of that though is I'm I'm now I'm a little worried like this could be like his real breakout year. It could. On, like, I mean the way he played when he was healthy. Was, yeah, because he's gotten better at like really consistently. Step of the way. So yeah. I'm wondering like this year if he really takes a big leap and then we're like oh crap, he could. Oh, yeah. And we have this again, which is yeah, I mean, to have. it's yeah, it's not a bad problem. It's just like again, I'd rather not have to yes. wonder who the next guy is going to be opposite of him again. So. Yeah, exactly. We'll um, so then looking forward, uh, for this like for this offseason, kind of the needs we've talked about this whole time. You know, they really need to fix that strong safety thing. We've talked a lot about that. Um, yeah, we we still are big proponents of drafting a wide receiver, probably high, mm-hmm. um, relatively high in yeah. the first three rounds at least. Um. I think I think the interesting thing, and, and we'll talk about this more next week. But I, I, depending on how the wide receivers fall in the draft, I'm wondering if if there are multiple ones available, or I mean, I guess it would be better if it was the last one. But if they're able to work out that trade down, because some team is really desperate to come up and get their guy before the Pats and the Packers pick. Yeah, actually, something that'll be coming out uh, sometime tomorrow. I explored some trade down possibilities. Mm-hmm. Um, and I do think there's a chance that whether it's the chiefs or the Packers or somebody like that, mm-hmm. some, somebody is getting to, to 19, 20 ish and they see an opportunity to jump ahead of somebody. Cause even the Packers are 22, like Patriots could still possibly go receiver. Mm-hmm. I mean, they didn't make oh, yeah. a big trade for one. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, the chiefs obviously should be in the market for receiver. We'll see if they actually are. It's kind of hard to say at this point. Um, whether they're going to just try to formulate with the guys they have, or what, honestly, but... I'm I'm kind of out on them as in uh, with a receiver in the first round. Yeah, it seems like a lot of people are, because I, I get I it. Think, because I think to get one of those guys in that first group, they would probably have to trade up, and I don't think they want to yes. do that. I don't think they think do that, either. But and I think that there will be guys available with their picks in the next two rounds that can still be solid players because essentially, like you have your three starters in Hardman. Mark uh, Valdez, Scantling, and Juju. Like those are right. going to be your guys, and then you also have Kelsey, and you know you might go twelve personnel a decent bit now. You know, try to run the ball a little more. So I'm one. I think because of how like their corner and edge room are really it's, concerning. It's concerning. It's a so yeah. I think that that's where they might go in the first round, and maybe in the second round they come back and get more of a weapon from Mahomes. But I, I think yeah. that I think be, especially like, and I, I don't, I don't, I don't think that because they got rid of Tyreek Hill, they're just giving up on weapons. But no. They've never really invested highly at receiver. No, the, and it. really, yeah, the really they they just probably don't feel the need, especially now. Yeah, like they have a quarterback that's going to be able to make guys work. I was right? exactly, yeah. and people could say whatever they want to. Like, there's still people that feel like Tyreek Hill kind of like made Mahomes as good as he is, which is a hilarious thing to say. Like, yeah, Hill Hill is a unique weapon, and mm-hmm. is going to still probably be a unique unique weapon for a couple of years. But you combine that with what Mahomes is able to do, and that's how you get what you saw from Tyree kill, right? Mm-hmm. Like not every team is going to be able to use Hill exactly the way that the pay. Yeah. The way that uh, the patch from Holmes is able to use him in that offense. And mm-hmm. it's not going to be the same with two. I don't, you know, that's definitely not going to be the case. Yeah. So it's definitely, they help each other, but I think that they know that they can afford to spend premium picks at higher, more important positions of need opposed to having to force receiver picks just to make him happy or anything. Yeah. So and then in term, I think cor- I think corner is in- it'll be interesting to track. I honestly I think that with the guys they have there now, I think they're ready to ride with that on going into the first week of the yes. season. Honestly, which is concerning a little bit, but yeah, I think I think there's a decent chance that it turns out okay. And I think they're going to draft some guy late, uh, you know, in the 
fourth or sixth round or something, you know, kind of just try to replace Justin Lane on special teams, honestly. Um, maybe you can keep both if Lane actually improves for some reason. But some reason, I, I don't yeah. think they're looking for that starter this year. I think they're going to wait for that for next year. Like, maybe. I think the the only way, and I actually, this is another pick I made in a mock I did recently, and it was mostly out of the fact that kind of the way the board fell when I was doing simulation, I didn't like a lot of the guys that were there as day one starters mm-hmm. to, as an impact. So I was looking at, you know, who could be a guy that maybe not this year, but the year after or longer might be a huge piece if he works out. And I ended up on Zion McCollum out of Sam Houston State because he he was just, he's in this in athletic which freak. round. It was I had him in the second round. Okay, league. good. I thought you were talking about the yeah. first. No, not the first. <laughs> okay, so that's what I get. Okay, second round. Was, I can... He fell to the the fifty two, and like a lot of seems like a lot of mock like draft machines don't have him going very early. I think he's going to go a lot earlier than they mm-hmm. than those mock drafts. Yeah, him saying, and Tariq but, Woolen are going to go way yeah. high. Like Woolen, I think is going to be a guy that goes high and doesn't work out. I mm-hmm. think the McCollum could very well work. Yeah, out. I agree. With so that. it, I I had them taking him. Like that might be the only type of player that could go in the first two rounds. If especially if they don't go in the first round, if nobody falls to them, that they can't help but pass up on. But yeah. it's it's hard to say with corner because yeah. I do think the guys that are there right now are going to be the starters regardless of yeah. how they do. And it. I, I could see that. And I the other one is that like Andrew Booth seems to be falling because of injury. Does, and yeah. The Steelers are not. I feel like they are all, one of those teams that will issue a guy if they have a kind of a big injury problem. Yeah. Um. And that's and Booth, it's it's just been really this off season, so maybe it's not that big of a deal. But no. sports hernias are weird, and that's the kind of issue he has. So and he hasn't tested at all. So I think that could go either way for them. But I think they will like his tape a lot. So that's a possibility. But again, yeah. like that's that, that's a really good situation for him because he doesn't have to start day one. No, he wouldn't have. To. I don't think so, he would unless he really just shows. And I mean, if, if he if he blows Levi Wallace out of the water, I'm, right? Or I'm thrilled, right? Like yeah. But, so that's fine with me. But yeah, so, and, you know, I think then next year, you know, you see how these guys played and then you evaluate, you know, okay, like now we're either going to, you know, use a high draft pick or, you know, if the, if the, if the season goes well and you're like, all right, like we're still going to try to ride this out, you know, maybe you try to make a big splash or signing a corner or something. Yeah, we definitely could. So, yeah. And then unfortunately, uh, the running back need the mark is really dried up for signing running backs, you know, the guys like we like, like Ronald Jones and Marlon Mack have signed elsewhere, Mm -hmm. which It's frustrating. So I don't know if Steelers are going to try to invest something there in, in with a meaningful pick. Uh, so they might just kind of make not yeah. do the focal point of the offense. I, again, I feel play. like the the key point is I feel like if we if they haven't made a pick by the fourth round, I think that fourth round pick is the pick that should be looked at as like when they might start to consider it. Right. Mm-hmm. Like if he if there's if there's a running back that they really think could make an impact as the number two behind him in year one. Yeah. I think that they would maybe do that. I, I was some of the guys like, I like the idea of a guy like a Pierre strong jr. Mm-hmm. Coming in as being the backup. Cause he's so different from yeah. Najee, right? Like mm-hmm. he gives you that speed that we don't really get from Najee. He gives you the quickness that Najee has, but in a different way, he's more mm-hmm. of a true like open field runner opposed to, you know, anything else. So something like that. But I, I think if they make it past the four, their fourth round pick, it, I don't know if they would spend one of the late round picks on a guy because I don't think they'd think that they would make an impact day one, yeah. but it depends on who's still there, I think. I think the biggest need, this is more of a 2023 need that, right. that I don't think they'll focus on this year at all, but I think next year's going to be big is rebuilding the defensive line because, yes, yeah. like we said, two, it is hitting free agency. <clears throat> he could have a good year if he plays and comes back. We just don't know. But aside from that, Alouel yeah. is also going to be hitting free agency at like 37 years old. Um Chris Wormley's going to be a free agent. Cam Hayward's going to be another year older. Yeah. And, you know, he's still playing great. So, you know, you can sign, you yeah. can keep Who him knows? going. But <laughs> you've really, at that point, you've got really got Cam Hayward and Isaiah Loudermilk and like Carlos Davis. So you yeah. need to start kind of restarting that cycle of investing high picks in the defensive line. I, f- I feel like this year, I don't see them going with it high no. just because it just isn't as big of a need. But, the only situation I could see is like maybe if they do trade back in the first round, right? Like they decide they do want to trade back and a guy like Travis Jones makes it to like the late twenties. Maybe I mean, I think then the, I think he'd be there. No problem. I think, I yeah, think like, I still think he goes second round. I just don't think he makes it to them in the second. Right. That's good. He's probably going to go inside of that, like yeah. 32 to 45 range ish mm-hmm. type yeah. something around there. That would be probably the only player that I could see maybe being the guy there, but Jordan again, Davis falls them this year. I'd be 
interested. Yeah, but I I just have a hard time thinking that's going to happen. I I, I agree, seen... but I I think it's possible because like I don't think in those picks before them, I don't think the Eagles or the Saints will take him. No, I don't because think they so. don't really need slash value that. The Chargers are in there, but they made so many free agency signings that. <clears throat> I mean, it would kind of make like, them complete, really complete. But I don't, but like they already have like Sebastian Joseph Day, yes. and Austin Johnson. Like they already have a, a good amount of guys there that like. So they would. It would be kind of an overkill point, and and for True. a team that is going to be more focused on defending the pass, it doesn't make a ton of sense now. Right. So that's like the one spot. Like so, if like he doesn't go to Baltimore, like fourteen, he might be there. It's possible. I think it also depends on do the Saints move up with those picks, right? Because then the team that gets those picks. Maybe depending on who they move up with, yeah, could could be That's a spot a for them too. But I still think the most likely thing that would happen with that is that it would be the Giants moving down from like five ahead of the Panthers. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, but if and if it's the Giants getting those picks, they're not taking Jordan Davis either. So listen, it's, I doubt I it. At least. Don't I mean I know Gettleman's not there anymore, right? Yeah, but they, like they only have they have Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence, and that's really it on the defensive line. So like, yeah if they still want to keep running three, four and like wink Martindale loves him, some massive nose tackles. He does. That's true. So, but yeah. you know, <laughs> I just feel like, I mean, for them to do that though, I feel like it'd be so on brand for them to do that, but it would actually maybe not be a bad thing. It would for be, once. Yeah. Yeah. Like it. Cause again, that would make that, that those top three guys in the interior pretty disgusting everybody everybody be praising the so, pick and dave got be singing home like right like what, what the heck? i've been doing this for years <laughs> nobody I, liked what i did it. i traded obj and got the, with the first round pick i got for him i'm <laughs> like and yeah i mean it's hard to say like whether they would or wouldn't do that but i do think it's still probably more than likely they'd attack other things but yeah. it's 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 possible but it just feels to me like if someone doesn't take him way too early like someone just jumps on him way too early and we just don't see it coming someone will find a way to go up and like get him or something will happen there. So we'll, yeah, we'll so, see though. You know, rebuilding that defensive line. And then, you know, obviously franchise quarterback is kind of the priority number one <laughs> for this year. And I think more so next year, I really hope more so next year, but Me too. Yeah. I don't think they're probably going to invest one of their first two picks. In the I, I can't wait to be at, at my friends, which is where I'm going to be for the draft. And talking about how we took like Desmond Ritter at like whatever pick, if we trade down or uh, to keep him at 20 and if we trade down, for, if we trade down from, I'm fine with it. I'm still until I see you're going to, you're going you're yeah, gonna to pick up multiple day two picks regardless. So I'm that's fine true. With yeah, I guess, but like I, I, he'll be, he'll be one of those guys that if we were to take, I will not say anything good about him until he proves me other proves otherwise. Yeah, <laughs> that's just how enough. I'm going to be. But yeah, we'll, we'll, I still, it's just hard to shake that feeling. They're going to go quarterback. And like, I'm hoping that yeah. we're wrong about that, but man, if they're, if they're not taking one or they're at least not planning to take one, they are putting on the biggest show possible in order to make people think so. As I said, <laughs> I, I'm sure I've said on this show, but I love being wrong. And this is one of right. those times where I really, really, I'm, yeah, wrong. I'm more than happy to be <laughs> wrong about a lot of stuff that we're concerned they may do yeah. this year. So. All right, that's going to do it for us for this week. Uh, We'll be back next week with our draft preview. We'll go through kind of our dreams and nightmares, shout out Meek Mill scenarios for each round uh, (laughs) and see like what we would, what we think will happen, what we are scared will happen and what we would love for to happen. Uh, Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, Shane, let people know where they can find you and your work. So I'm at Shane Kubis on Twitter, like always, and just watch out for at Steelers ATV as well. Um, Just going to try to have some more stuff. I did just recently put something out about kind of, the Steelers win now mentality and is that going to be tested now that the AFC is so stacked definitely check that out but other than that just kind of look out for any streams we're going to be doing a lot of stuff coming after the draft as well absolutely you can find me at Mitchell T Wolf W-O-L-F-E on Twitter make sure you're following around the block on YouTube Twitch Twitter Facebook uh, following us on Twitter as we said uh, and yeah uh, we'll have the I think I'll be trying to get a mock draft out on around the block this week which will be my right. first uh, gonna try to keep it <clears throat> what I think is realistically going to happen not going to be trying to uh, go so too predictive. Off the rails. yeah predictive. yeah yeah more so predictive as opposed to just blathering my own thoughts on the internet which <laughs> that's why that's what this is for i, don't yeah, I mean that's what this form. is what we do right i mean yeah so. exactly <laughs> but, all right thank you guys for listening we hope to have you back next time